Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. Today I am finally going to do my sewing machine video. That has to be by far the most requested video I have ever gotten. People want to see and know more about my old sewing machine. So I will be showing it to you. I also get asked if you guys can see my fabric and I hesitate to show you guys that because it's really sad how I just have that fabric out everywhere and you know it's just it's just out there in the cellar and by windows probably getting sun damage I don't take care of it I have a hard time with things and that is one of them much of that fabric I bought just before I quit my sewing business I had spent like over a thousand dollars on fabric and then just up and quit. So I don't like to be reminded of that. I'm not beating myself up. <laughs> yes, I have regrets. I have many regrets in my lifetime and no, they're not making me the person I am today. See how I am already? It's because I don't like what I'm about to do. I don't like that I'm going to take you in my cellar and show you my fabric. So I'm already like becoming defensive over what I know I'm going to feel. But I'm just going to do it. If I sound grumpy, it's because I am. If I sound like I don't like showing you the fabric, it's because I don't like to revisit parts of my past. I just don't. <laughs> but you guys keep asking about the sewing machine. And I did want to show that I still have the original sewing machine seat also. But that's in the cellar. So I said I might as well just go ahead and show them the fabric. So I'm going to. And I have some up here. I have some upstairs, but I'll just tell you, like, what's up there. I just don't feel like going all through the house. I wonder if I should do this. <laughs> we'll be fine. I will show you my fabric and the sewing machine. And then, when you guys ask, I will have a video to send you to. So let's just get started. I'm just going to start with some of the fabric that I have right here on my main floor. We're going to go down cellar, look at the sewing machine seat and the fabric there. Then we'll come back up and I'll talk to you a little bit about my sewing machine. Let's start right here at this table that I happen to have tucked away in the corner of my room. This table was meant to just hold some craft supplies or whatever and actually be a crafting place for Skyla when she's here. But you can see it's filled with fabric and some of my projects. The fabric, which is piled all around, and a couple containers, those are some old upcycle fashion things. This is all part of my aunt's stash. When both my aunt and uncle died, my cousin let me come and take some fabric. So I have all this, and this has all been washed, and that's why it ended up having a home here. Now, I don't know if you remember, I'll try to go back and get an image of it, when I bought 60 yards of fabric recently at Marden's, I showed you guys what that looked like in a shopping cart or even on my sewing table. And it was probably like this, this, and you know, and not even as much as like those three piles of fabric. And that was 60 yards. This is what 60 yards of fabric looks like. So you can tell I have probably four times that much here on this table and that's just this table let's keep moving just to give you an idea that's my mother's wheelchair between the table and the door this is where i sit to sew and this is the corner that i just showed you with the fabric now right here i have a tub of scraps and this is the basket that i used for the quilt block party this is another basket that I brought up of scraps. I don't know why. I feel the need to have so many scraps. These tubs are filled with scraps left over from garments that I made. I have some yardage here that I, you know, went and got in the cellar and then it just never makes it back down there. Some scrap batting. This is another tub that's full of scraps. I have like a lot of fleece scraps and just tons and tons of scraps. These are some of the fabrics that I actually bought at Marden's for myself that I used for the tote bag and I have enough for some other projects. Down here, there's some more fabric. There's not even fabric scraps there. Those are fabric things that other people would throw away, but I can't. It's bags of this stuff that I keep. I keep every little scrap and thread and everything. And in that drawer is a lot of scraps that are like 
you know, the things that I cut from the upcycled fashions and just all kinds of things. I just don't know why I can't get rid of this stuff. Just tons and tons of scraps. This pile is the scraps for the quilt that I just made. That will get put away. I am good about keeping my workstation clean. This is some fabric I picked up at Martin's that I'm going to end up putting on eBay at some point. I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it. This is the upcycled fashion rack. And I still have a few things that have to be hung. I do have a couple more packages. Might do that Friday. Might wait till Monday. Don't know yet. This couch was piled with stuff and I have to get it cleaned up because Skylar's coming. So those are a lot of her babies over there that I will be fixing. But just to let you know that this couch was piled with fabric and it all needs to be washed. The stuff that came from my aunt. I gave up on washing it all so now it's all making its way upstairs. So there's a tote here that's not too much fabric but there is fabric in there. But I have a big tote upstairs twice as long as that, filled with fabric. There's even a little tote here and some very old patterns. That's like, um, what do you call it? Felt. I have two big bags of fabric that have to go upstairs. That one and that one. And I think I have five more bags upstairs of fabric and I think two other totes. So a lot there. Now we're going in the cellar. I know you guys have also been asking me for a cellar tour. I really just don't feel like revisiting that today. This is enough emotion for me. Maybe someday. And I hope you guys understand when I say I can't do it or I don't want to do it. It's not that I don't want to show you guys. Uh, it's that it's, it's hard for me. So it has to be the right timing. Just so you guys know, this is the new cellar under the part where my mother lives. And it's already a disaster area. I didn't bother to show you any of the old cellar, the cellar that has been there for over a hundred years. Maybe one of these days. So let's just start with the seat of the sewing machine. This is the seat it came with, except my grandmother recovered it. And there's just some very old stuff in here. I'm sure my grandmother made that pin cushion. Some old newspapers. This is my actual handwriting. I wrote my name. I must have been a very little girl. And there's my cousin's name, too. I don't know why mine says three and hers says six. And there's a lot of thread in here. Not everything in here is old. Like, this just got tossed in there. Some little sewing kit. But there is a lot of old stuff. Oh, there's the front of the book. I think the book is upstairs. I hope so, because... I'm going to need it to be able to tell you guys stuff about the machine. So just a lot of thread down there and trying to change the settings for the lighting. Okay, this is an old couch and it's piled with fabric. There is actually some good fabric there that I could be putting to good use. There's also very old thread. These are threads from way back, like when my grandmother worked at the dress shop and they used to make dresses and there was lots of thread. Stuff like lace, an old telephone. I even have a little bit of fabric hanging there. I have fabric in these shelves and part of a stockpile that is so old I wouldn't want to touch anything in there. But you can see there's a lot of fabric. And over there too, a lot of fabric. Then over here, I have a lot of fabric. These two tables are filled with fabric and all the bags underneath are fabric. These are like various patterns and things that I need to go through. There's all kinds of stuff here. There's like fake fur, there's satin, there's a little bit of cotton, there's a lot of st stretchy knit things. There's a lot of um, netting and tool and panels of things. Tubs here of fabric, bags of fabric, and more fabric, and some trash that's probably been sitting there waiting to be taken out for like two years. That's recycling stuff, just cardboard and old taxes, all kinds of things. Then over here I have a couple bags of fabric on this chair, and then I have all these totes that are filled with fabric. Most of this is yardage. 
and they are two, and some of them have lace and stuff in these. I think this one is like all lace, and that one's got some other stuff. One of these days I'll tell you why I have so much lace and netting. You might think it's an interesting story. So all that is fabric. And I just remembered that in another part of the cellar, I probably have about six more like cardboard boxes filled with fabric. Then in another part of the cellar, we had an old entertainment center, big, and that's all fabric in that too. So I forgot to show you that. I'm not going back down there. A lot of those fabrics are sarongs and India tapestries. Yeah, it's just such a shame to just let that stuff sit there. But I'm not mentally capable of doing much about it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now we're going to look at the machine. I did indeed find the rest of the book, and it is a Singer 401A, the Slantomatic, the greatest sewing machine ever built. The book says copyright 1958, but I was told by a sewing machine repair person that this is probably a 1959 machine. I was born in 1960, and I remember that my grandmother had it, you know, when I was very little. So she probably had it around that time. And you can see that the book, you know, has the old-fashioned little pictures. And I had scribbled in this book. There's I don't know if I had done that or my grandmother. I, I know she had made me either like a pair of pajamas or maybe a clown suit for Halloween. And I remember this being on there. You could do like appliques and stuff or embroidery stitching. There's discs that come with this machine, but I can't find them. I don't know if maybe my grandmother didn't give them to me when she gave me the machine. And then when she died, I don't know what happened to those. I don't remember ever having them. I probably didn't care to use them, so didn't take them. But this is supposed to be considered an industrial machine, and uh, it's very good. But it is broken, and I'll show you. I did want to show you that there is a little door here on the side and a little cubby. This is a box that has been in there since I got the machine. My grandmother gave it to me when I was probably like... 24, 25 is when I got custody of the sewing machine. And there's the original feet and different sewing things that came with it. And I have used most of these. And they're pretty cool. So this box, at one point, yes, I was going to say, I remember, it had the picture of the Last Supper on it. I don't know if maybe something religious came in this box and my grandmother kept it or if she put the picture on there, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And look, it's, the box is even stitched with thread. And it's obviously something my grandmother did. So that goes in here and that gets shut. And then this, and then it has this that comes out like that to hold this but I don't need that because I put this on a table like that. So this is the machine. You can see it's a model 401A and this is what it looks like and it's very worn out from years of use. It has the drop-in bobbin right here and here's what's broken this part is not supposed to come out. That is supposed to stay in there. And it's supposed to be able to snap back to allow me to put this guy in and then snap closed and hold it in place. But it doesn't do it anymore. Something is busted. However, if I put this in, I am able to just sit it there and it pretty much stays. The other thing that's broken is that when I turn this knob to let me do the bobbin, the needle still wants to go up and down, so I actually have to hold it like this while I'm spinning the bobbin just to not make it go up and down because for some reason when it goes up and down while I'm spinning a bobbin, this thing wants to go nutty and fly out and then things can get jammed. So I would like to get that fixed, but there's never a good time for me to get rid of the sewing machine. So I procrastinate, as always, 
Here's my throat plate lever. Here's how I go back, stitch, and decide on my stitch length. This decides like the position of the needle, it'll move it left and right. These are different settings like to do zigzag and whatnot. And up here, let's just take this off for a second. Up here, oh and you can sew with two threads. Over the years I've lost this other peg. This is where you would drop in those funky discs if I would have them. It would do embroidery. Um, applique, what do you call it? Like embroidery. Different things, like the clown thing that I showed you in the book. And then here are my settings for the different stitches. And that also doesn't work. Like if I want one in particular, like FL, I might have to put it on E or G. And it's just not lined up right. But that's the chart for this. And all I, you know, basically use, like when I want to do zigzag, I have to put it on L, I think, and that's all I have to do is change it, A-L, and I move this over. Let's look. Yep, that would be zigzag. I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, the foot pedal. A lot of people who have the same machine, yes, my floor is a mess. I try to sweep up after every project. I don't always accomplish that. But this is the foot pedal, and a lot of people don't realize they have a foot pedal because there's also a lever for, um, let me see, how do I get that down? Well, it's been a long time since I've ever used it, but up inside there, there's a lever that comes down that you can push with your knee, and the foot pedal can be stored up here. There's a place to and attach it up there so it's out of your way. As a matter of fact, I think that lever actually hits on the pedal to make the machine run. But a lot of people don't realize that they actually have a foot pedal. I like the foot pedal, so that's what I use. So that is it, folks. And over there, I have two surges. Uh, one is broken, I think, and I have another serger downstairs that is broken. And then down here, I have another sewing machine that doesn't run great. It's just a cheapy portable. And then down cellar, we have my mother's cabinet sewing machine that also needs repair. And then I have some really old sewing machines down cellar also. But this is the baby that I use that my grandmother gave to me. I guess I can talk to you. She always told me when I was little that I was getting the sewing machine and I got it and she gave it to me when like I said I was in my 20s and then she kind of had regrets because she felt like I wasn't using it and she thought that I was just never going to use it and she felt like maybe she gave it to the wrong person and I assured her that I would use it. At the time, I had no interest in sewing businesses. I mean, I didn't even think of that, but I did use it to, like, repair clothing. And then a little bit after that, I started just, you know, playing around and using it to make decorative pillows and things like that. And then later, after she died, I started a sewing business, and I used this sewing machine for over 11 years. And then I gave that up for a little bit, and now I'm back at it. So I hope she knows that she gave it to the right person because I have used the hell out of this sewing machine. And I love it and I appreciate it. And it's the machine that Skylar is learning how to sew on. So far she hasn't done any of the actual sewing, but she will this summer. But she has um, learned all about the spinning of bobbin and the pedal, she controls the pedal for me, and when I say stop, she knows to stop, and just different things like that. So for a couple of years now, she sits with me at the machine, and this summer I expect to uh, let her actually do some sewing. I wish they had like a little finger guard. I'm sure they probably do have something that you could attach just to make sure your finger doesn't get close to the needle, because it hurts. I actually got a needle uh, through my thumbnail before, and especially like if you're sewing something like really thick and your foot goes up, there's times that your finger can fit under there. So it's not too cool. I hope this satisfies your curiosity about my sewing machine. I really do get questions all the time. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If I forgot anything, ask and I'll try to answer and I'll be back with more soon. Bye! And as for all that fabric just laying out there in the dusty cellar, 
Don't judge me. It dawned on me that I didn't tell you anything about my grandmother. She was born in Quebec. Her name was Florida Lemieux. When she became a United States citizen, she changed it to Florita because she didn't want to be named after a state. She was born in 1905 and she died in 1993 and she lived directly across the street from me and she was awesome.